Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, it's a late night last night and a uh, very late morning this morning. I had issues. Um, woke up with a headache, a really bad one, so it was kind of tough. I wasn't doing really well this morning, so I woke up late. But I'll show you what I was working on last night. Late. If you have an embroidery machine, this is March's Kimberbell fill in the blank. Isn't it cute? Let's see if I can hold that. Okay, so that's one side. You can put bunnies on both sides. There's two different bunnies. But I decided to put grandchildren's name on the other side. How cute is that for Easter? I think it's adorable. Cute, huh? There's so much you can do with these, but I had a lot of fun last night working on this. It was a little bit confusing at first. What, what made me so late is at first, the embroidery is fine doing that part, but putting making it into this shape from a, a normal canvas tote bag um, threw me off just a little bit. So I did a little bit of ripping last night and had to re-sew it together. But I know what I'm doing now. It's really kind of genius. But... That's what I worked on last night. I thought I was so cute. I'll fill it up. I already posted pictures to Facebook for um and on the website with some of my little know me friends. Um I've got some new fabric coming in. Uh I'm gonna post that later on. It's a really cute, really but um, it's not, um, it's all primary colors and kind of like stained glass. It's gonna be so cool. It's all rainbow colors. Um, hopefully, to, I mean, I found out about it yesterday, but I'm hoping today they have the shipping tran um, tracking information so that I can figure out exactly when it's coming in. So yes, I'm a little bit behind. Normally I'd have these blocks all laid out for you, but like I said, it's just been one of those. One of those days. And, okay. We're going to do this out of order just to give myself a little bit of um, leeway. I need to get into the swing. This block, we're definitely going to be. The, the second block I'm doing, we're definitely going to be doing with um, scant quarter of an inch because it's a lot of small pieces and a lot of piecing in general. And this one is going to be Oscar triangles, which we've done a number of times. You can do draw a line diagonally from one end to the other while having two fabrics face to face, right sides together. And so a quarter of an inch on each side of the line and then cut them on the line, which will give you two um, half square triangles. But since I have the grid glide on my extension table, all I do is start with it um, on an angle with my quarter inch foot right on the corner and keeping track of, we'll do this, making sure that this corner, the opposite corner stays on the diagonal line when it goes through and guess what? I don't have to do the extra step of a quarter of, an, of drawing the center line. I am going to chain piece. Normally I would have my little flower here, but it's out at the registers to show people what the package is. So I'm going to be stuck cutting these um, with a scissor, God forbid. But I don't even cut the thread yet. And we just, this is chain piece. It is much easier and I mean, I'm not saving a ton of time, but 
One of the biggest things I save is this is a brother machine. Brothers and baby locks have a tendency to want to draw the beginning fabric into the plate on the sewing machine. If you don't have what they call leaders and enders, and that would be um, fabric that you end with and fabric that you start with. So by chain piecing, I don't have that problem. Goodness gracious, there's so much going on. You have like no idea, it is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna pretend there's an imaginary line right there that I'm gonna cut on that goes from one corner to the other. This is just one of the things that I do to make piecing faster. Is it 100% accurate? No, but it's pretty close and it's close enough for government work. And it's close enough for me to get these seams to match too. How is everybody? Oh, I almost forgot. Weather looks pretty crappy today. So, they're gonna do a rainy day sale. 10% off of everything. How cool is that? I'm gonna post it to Facebook. Only because it's just so gutty out. And I don't know how much longer it's gonna rain today, but I think that's part of the reason why I was so slow to get up and why I had the headache to the pressure out of storm. I was very slow to get up, which is normally not me. I had a sinus headache. Asking this one. I hope these um, videos and this quilt along is helping you and giving you something to work on and helping you perfect the quarter inch seam or stamp quarter inch seam, it should definitely help you learn to uh, line up your seams much better. Because you've got a lot of practice on this quilt. Now, I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. You can cut these dog gears off. This is what they call a door gear when you do a half square triangle, that extra piece. But I have a tendency not to because it actually helps me when I'm lining my seams up. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, now we're just gonna put this together. Here is my box. Uh, and I dropped a pin, but it's okay. And I'm just going to put the rows together and then put the whole block together. And I'll show you what I mean by um, not cutting the door gears off. So what I'm going to do is, it's not so much a helpful on this first one, but if we line it up straight on that door gear, first off, it gives me a little extra piece to um, use for aligning, a little bit of extra fabric there so that I can actually grab what I'm looking for for my machine. And I'm just gonna go right up and chain piece these. So when I'm lining them up, especially this way, you can, so towards the point or the V that they normally create and line up your seams perfect. It gives you a target to shoot for. And let me see if I can show you this one. Okay.
See right here, that little V, by ending at that V, it gives you the crisp point that you need. And I'll show you more as we piece some more. It's just, I don't know. Again, it's one of those things that I'm not quite sure where I learned it. It might have been something as simple as trying to cut down time. But I learned to not have to cut the door gears off. I'm not saying I never do, but in simple piecing half square triangles like this, no, I don't. Okay, Duke. And what I did, just for laughs and giggles, I ironed this seam that way, I ironed this seam this way, and I ironed that seam that way. That's so that when I align the rows up, I have um, opposite seams to nest them. Just gonna put the other part together. I do pick up my foot when I get close to the seam so that I try to keep my seams neat and it does, the foot doesn't flip the seam over the wrong way that I don't want it to. That's another thing that this project and this quilt is going to be good for you is to try and get a little bit neater with your seams. Is it the end of the world if your seams are not perfect? No. But this quilt will really help you a lot in perfecting these little things. All right, this block is just about done. All right, now all I'm gonna do is nest my seams. I'm sewing from this side to this side, so I put my pins on an angle so that I can take, stop right in the seam with the needle down before I take the pin out.
I'm going to slow. I'm not going to sew over my pin, but stop with the needle down right in the seam. That you're more likely to have accurate seams. Sometimes just the act of taking the pin out is enough to move the seam. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Now I'm gonna sew this one on before I iron it. And again, I'm nest my seams. What do we mean by nesting? Well, this top seam is going that way. This bottom seam is going this way. The two meet and nest together. That's how you line up your seams. And again, I'm sewing from this side to this side, so my pins are on an angle. I grab one seam on one side and one seam on the other. They're on an angle. They're not on a drastic angle, but they're on an angle enough that Let's see. Okay, they're on an angle enough so that I can stop in my seam right where the stitching is up here and not hit the pin. So I can stop with the needle down before I take the pin out. How's everybody doing today? It's such a rainy day. So don't forget, I'm going to post on Facebook and send an email that um, we're going to do a rainy day sale today. 10% off. I figure, why not? I've started a late day. It's a little bit off. It's a rainy day. You should have seen how much trouble I had getting my little dog out in the, the rain this morning. She is such a little... Princess Poodle. She doesn't even like getting her feet wet. She did not like the rain at all. Not even a little bit. I literally have to sit there by the door and make sure she doesn't come running back down. So she does her business. If you're lucky enough to have a square the size that we eat for these blocks, I know that the instructions say do not square cut up the you know cut the box down but there is a starting size that these blocks need to be most of the time you're gonna be fine if you're off slightly especially in the beginning but you're consistently off in the same direction leave it alone don't freak out don't try to readjust it all to get it to the exact size that they say if they want it let's say seven and a half and you're six and three quarters or you're seven inches or seven and a quarter and you're consistently seven and a quarter throughout this process so far leave it alone it's fine okay so there i'm going out of order this is block 10. so now i'm going to do block nine this one, we're definitely going to do a scant quarter of an inch, okay? There is a lot of piecing in this block. It is kind of a, um, kind of a log cabin or an off-centered log cabin. And let's see if we can show you what it'll look like.
Sorry, I just had to adjust. Okay, so let's see if we can show this to you. Also, this is kind of on the same idea as a uh, French braid type of block. This one's going to be a little bit crazy. I'm going to have to do it over here because it's just too big. you can see that when I go to the other camera okay how is everybody any plans this weekend or this week? I'm already thinking about decorations for Easter. I got a bunch of little know me friends that have come in. It's gonna be super fun. Okay, let's see. Can you see that block? No, I can't. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully you can see it. There we go. At least most of it. Okay, we've got a little four patch up here. Then we've got the small blocks that go diagonally and the larger strips on either side of the small diagonal blocks for um, a kind of log cabin. So all I'm gonna do is the four, four patch first. And again, use a scant quarter of an inch. There is a lot of small seams and a lot of seams that I'd rather the block be too big and cut it down to the cut size that we need, rather it than it be too small. If it's too small, it's going to be much harder to put it into the row and connect the blocks. I think we've got some Camelot getting ready to ship too, but I don't remember which license print coming. I've also been thinking about row by row or quilters trek this year, trying to come up with a good design. Um, it's a different one this year. It's it's a little bit more difficult for me to try and get it to be cohesive with my other designs from past years because it's a monochromatic or uh, neutrals like black and white and tan with one pop of color. And I just been racking my brains trying to figure out what design I'm gonna do. I can't, haven't figured it out yet. I'm toying with the idea of doing a rocket. No, so mostly black and white with maybe a little bit of red. At least that's what I've been toying with. I don't know if it'll work. I don't even know if that's gonna be my final idea, but either that or I'm trying with tans and whites for sandy beaches and whites for a rocket with 
Some blue is my color for water. I don't know. Just haven't decided what I'm going to do. Okay. I've done the little four patch. And now what I would suggest is whether you do. Okay, let's see if I can show you up close. This is what we're doing. Okay, this is the next part that we're going to work on. Whether you attach the bottoms or the sides first, it doesn't matter. Just I would do it consistently. So all the way down, I would make sure you're going to, if you're going to do the bottom, do the bottom each time. Connect this to this side each time, the same. So I'm going to work with my little square, my accent square. And what I'm going to do to try and chain piece is I'm going to do the accent square on each piece first. It, does it save a ton of time? No. But for me, it's just a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Let's see, what did we have coming in? Oh, the Camberbell pillow, chenille pillow CD, and three of the six velveteens are in. I'll, I'll post that to Facebook too. I only have two of the CDs remaining until I get another shipment because they were all sold on pre-orders. And I have one. I mean, can't, make, can't wait to make some pillows. They're really cool. Nice thing is you can do them, you have options. You can do them in chenille or applique. And I'm pretty sure, not positive, but I'm pretty sure you can even do them kind of like a monochromatic with just thread. I have to look at it closely, but I think you can. I really love the Easter totes. The Easter basket tote on the top. So and I'll be doing a video the third Monday in March. Um for the camera bell fill in the blank. And what that means is I have decided that I'll probably show you what I do to put them together. And what I mean by that is I'll only do one bunny. The design comes with two, either a boy or a girl bunny. But see how I put the name on the other side? I think, I mean, I'm not sure. You get both designs, so it's completely up to you. But as far as I'm concerned, you only need one. It's so cute. And I'm going to have it at the register filled with all kinds of goodies for Easter. All right, here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom one piece and put that one on. Hey, you know what? When we finish these two blocks, and put them on the, connect them to the row. Guess what? We've got our first row of this quilt done. Our first of 10. Okay, let me iron this. I'm ironing them to the bigger piece, the, uh, not the four patch. Okay. 
So I am ironing them towards the strips, not, okay, so what that means is I've got to iron these to the strip too, I forgot, just so that we can line them up. I know it's a minor thing, but it will help you for lining your seams up. And I know I've said it before, but it's worth saying again. Best press is your brand. I highly, highly recommend using the starch alternative. Um, because it's really gonna help you piecing these small pieces together. It's gonna stop them from getting all kinds of wonky and stretching while you're trying to sew them together and trying to get the seams lined up. So now we've ironed this seam towards this one and the seam towards this one. What that does is it gives you a natural nesting. And if you do this in advance, this really is gonna help you in the long run. Think about your blocks, think about how you're piecing um, and make it easier for you to get all of these seams lined up. It's just a minor thing that if you start to think about and learn now, it really will make things much easier for you. And again, we're using a scant quarter of an inch only because I would much rather cut a larger block down and square it up than having a block that's too small to work with. Hey, I really need to get this situated and bring all of my wool mat so it's easier for me to iron instead of rolling around. The only good thing is I do have a little chair which makes it so much easier. Don't forget, March 8th, we have the um, Kimberbell um, for a half day event for the little purse, which I've already done some, and it's gonna, I'm gonna do some bigger ones too, so that we can show you some options. Okay, so this is it. I'm gonna sew this one to this one. I press the seam towards this piece and then sew this one on there. It's just a lot of repetition. We've got so much going on. In March, we'll have our first Zoom or virtual bag class. It'll be a combination or a, what they call a hybrid class, meaning I will have students here in the store as well as students online. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm hoping we will have it posted to the website this week with the bag done so that we give everybody who wants to join plenty of opportunity. Now, connect them here. Does anybody have any questions so far? Having any issues with this project? Are you enjoying it so far? Let me know. 
If you don't want to see the videos anymore, let me know that too. I'm just trying to come up with ideas for you guys. And if it's not working for you, just let me know because I'll change things. Try and be neat with your seams. If you have to pick up your foot to make sure your foot doesn't catch in the seam and push it the wrong way, do that. It's only gonna help you in the long run. There we go. Nice thing about these blocks, really, I don't want you guys to go crazy. If they're not perfect, and let's face it, not many things are, but we are our worst envy. I know you're going to come across blocks that you're not going to like, you think you're going to do better, but if, especially when they are all these neutral fabrics, when they're all these neutral fabrics, in the long run, really, don't drive yourself crazy because nobody is going to see it. They're going to see the overall quilt. They're not going to see um, a little boo-boo or what you think is a boo-boo here or there. The hardest part with these neutral blocks is making sure that you have uh, the right side. White on lights and things like that. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell what the right side and what's the wrong side. He just wants to pull that little bit of fabric into the plate, which is between that and the first stitching and the last stitching not being super tight. That's one of the idiosyncrasies of Baby Lots and Brothers. Oh, cool, Jessica. I'm glad you like the videos. You can always post comments to the videos after you've started if you have questions. If I miss your post, send me a message and yell at me saying, yo, answer my question. Listen. It's just been kind of crazy around here. Now, see, that's what I like. And it's, let me tell you, I'm not perfect, but it's taken me a long time to get to the point where my seams are somewhat neat. And when you start doing the actual quilting and stitching on top, having neat seams is a huge helper because you don't have a big bulky mess that you're trying to stitch over. And sometimes when you do have that bulky mess and you try to stitch over it, you stubble and it messes up stitching on the front. But it's taken a while. You have to, one, have fun, but you it's, it's a delicate balance between having fun and getting it done and making sure you're done where you don't have issues afterwards and make it harder for yourself. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you popped in late, don't forget we're doing a scant quarter of an inch on this block. We're definitely going to have to cut it down, but it's really going to help you in the long run. Trust me. With this much stitching and these many seams, if you don't do a scant quarter of an inch, it's not, the block won't be big enough. Now we're down to the last a little bit. There you go. What do you think? I kind of like it. I'm not a big fan of log cabins. To me, 
If I do one log cabin block in a quilt, like a sampler, that's great, but I can't do, or don't, not that I can't, I don't like doing nothing but a complete log cabin quilt. Log cabin blocks to me are just too tedious. Oops. Oops, as long as your machine is threaded. I really love this mat. The reason I do this was I've got it set up for a center line. I have it set up for the quarter inch and with the quarter inch and my quarter inch foot with the guide, I use that also for my scant quarter. Inch. So it just makes piecing so much easier. Cutting process, Jeff, um, Jessica is tedious, but once you get it done, if you do it all at once, it's so much easier. Then you can have your little uh, packets like I do. Just do them each week once you get caught up. Here we go. And you notice I keep putting the block back down in the same place, the same way, the same um, orientation. It, it just helps to make sure when you're sewing, you might get interrupted with a phone call or somebody walks into your room that I know what I'm doing and I don't get interrupted to the point where I start putting things together wrong. Because let me tell you, on this quilt and in these blocks, I did do some seam ripping and taking things apart because I put the wrong, the block on the row in the wrong direction or sew two blocks together on the wrong side. So, by putting it down in the same position after each um, sewing and seam and pressing, it really is going to help you out in the long run. Ooh, and this gets what starts this week. Woohoo! Our Saturday sample starts this weekend. Ask me how far along I am. Yeah. First kits are done. First block's done. Second block is done. But that's about it. I'm hoping this week you get caught up on that. So by next month, the whole quilt is done and put together. And you guys can see what we're doing. Only because. I've got all of the fabric here and I want to get all those kits done as quickly as possible. There you go. Now, as the blocks are lined up in the book, that's how we're going to put them together and sew them together. The only thing is I'm not going to sew these together because I believe it is off a little bit. So I want to clean them up. Just like I cleaned the two blocks up from last time. And I'm going to put those on the row for you so that we can show you, I think, maybe. No. This is what I mean by doing it wrong. These two blocks should have been, this one is on this side. So I can't put it on. Oh, wait, maybe. I don't know. Or this should have been on this side. Heesh, kabibble. Yeah. Okay. This one should be over here. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. So guess what? Jack the Ripper comes out. I want to put these on for you so I can show you.
I hate Jack the Ripper. That's what happens when you try to do it fast or when you're tired. Oh yeah, there's been a few nights where I've been here because mine top, the first one of these is all done. I'm trying to get it on the machine so I can quilt it, but I'm not rushing it because I really want to have some fun with it as far as decorative quilting. But there were a few nights where I was here late putting these rows together and putting the quilt top together and yeah. I'd come back in in the morning and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> Especially when you're putting them together a little bit at a time, you know, a row at a time. I highly recommend having a um, area or place that you can um, like a design wall that you can put the rows up as you put them together, as the quilt comes together, just so that you can see where you are, it will make things much easier on you. Okie dokie. Sorry about that. It happens and it happens to everybody. Anybody that says it doesn't is not is lying. It happens to everybody. You know, you see these, even, you know, you see them online or on TV and everything looks perfect. Well, guess what? It's not perfect. They just happen to have really good editing software and a bunch of other people there to run around and get all the prep work done and do everything easily before they go on TV or video or anything like that. And unfortunately, I have to do all the prep work and the videos and putting it together and I am far from perfect. But that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. You know what I say. If you can look at it going tw from 20 feet away, riding horseback going 20 miles an hour, guess what? If you don't see anything wrong, there's nothing wrong. Okay, now we can put it together. Oh, you should go bibble, people. Okay, now what I want to do, don't care if the top doesn't match, meaning this part, all I'm really concerned about is making sure that the orange seams line up. That is what you're going to see. And that's what's going to be the most important part. All I'm doing is doing that first. The rest of it, I don't care. I will clean it up. This seam and this seam are the most important part of this. When we put these two blocks on. Fabric has a little bit of a, a give, a little bit of a stretch. So if you have a slight gap, you can work with it just a little bit to get it in. As long as these two seams match up, the rest of it is water under the bridge. It does not matter. That's where I personally have taken apart the quilt top and rows and blocks multiple times to get it straightened out. All right, see, that's just not too bad. There you go. 
All right, everybody. And I might take that out just a little bit and try it again because I'm not happy, but you get the idea. I have to go. Customers are starting to walk in. So if you have any questions, comments, or problems, feel free to put a comment and I will answer it afterwards. Um, have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.